Hello, kia ora. My name is Felicity McKenzie and I work for the Auckland Philharmonia Orchestra. We have been putting together a series of videos with musical and make and do activities that you can do at home. Today we're going to hear from our harpist, Ingrid, who's going to show us how the harp works and help you make one of your own. Some of the bits in this video might get a bit tricky, so if you need help, ask a member of your family. Have fun. Hi everyone. My name is Ingrid Bauer and I'm the principal harp with the Auckland Philharmonia Orchestra. Um, and this is my concert grand harp. The harp is part of the string section in the orchestra, but we are different to most of the other string instruments in the orchestra because all the other string instruments in the orchestra are what's known as bowed strings, where, like a violin, they use a bow to make the string vibrate. The harp is a plucked string instrument, like the guitar, where we pluck the string directly, with our finger in this case, rather than using a bow to make the sound. Now the harp makes a sound by having the strings pulled up very tightly, so there's lots of tension, um, and the string vibrates between two fixed points. So it's held right here, and it's held right down here against the soundboard, and in between that the string vibrates. And you can maybe even see this on the bigger strings of the harp if you look really closely. You can see it looks a little fuzzy. That's because the string is actually vibrating back and forth when I do that. And that vibration is amplified by the sound box which is all of this part of the harp. This is the sound board, and it's got this big hollow space here, um, which amplifies the movements and makes them of the air, makes those movements bigger, which makes the sound louder. Um, pitch is a combination of four things on a string. The thickness of the string, how dense the material of the string is, how long the string is, and how tight the string is. So you can see, I think, that down here in the bass where I have all my low notes, the strings are thicker than up here, way up the top, where I have all my high notes. Um, the material of the strings is the same for most of the harp, although we do have a denser material right in the bass, so that the harp doesn't have to get really, really, really tall to make the really low notes down here. Um, but the thing that's probably most obvious to you when you are looking at the harp is that the strings are different lengths, and that's a big part of how you get the right note. So up here, the little strings that make the high notes are really short, and they sound very high, and then down here, this string is that long, I can barely reach, and it makes a very low note. Um, the other thing that maybe you've seen if you've come to an APO concert is that we can change the tension on the string to change the pitch. And this is what I do when I tune the harp. And you'll see the other string instruments doing this as well when the orchestra tunes. They turn a peg to change the tension on the string. So my pegs are up here and I have a tuning key that slots onto them that allows me to turn them. Um, and you'll hear that if I lower the tension, the pitch drops. So here's my starting note. And if I lower the tension, drop that pitch. If I raise the tension, I raise the pitch again. And I'm going to put that back in tune now. So those are the factors that make uh, a difference to what note you get out of the string. And we're going to talk about those a little bit more when we make our own harp. Um, there's a lot of different sounds that you can make on the harp. You can pluck an individual string to make one note, like this. Or you can pluck more than one string together. Right now I'm going to do one string in each hand. also play a lot of notes at the same time, like this. That's 
called a chord, where we play lots of notes together. And the harp is very well known for what's called arpeggios, where we play all the notes in those chords in quick succession, really fast after one another, like this. And the other thing that harps are really well known for is what's called a glissando, when you run your finger up and down the strings like this. So I hope that you're going to have a bit of fun today making your own harp with me and maybe you can try some of those techniques once you've made it. Okay, hi everyone. So I'm now in my craft space and we're going to do a little bit of crafting. We're going to start with a cardboard box. Um, now I have one here that's maybe 20 or so centimeters long, nice little cube shape, um, and it does have a lid that comes off. This is going to be easier if your box has a lid that you can open. Mine's attached, but it, that I can open. This will be easier. It's not impossible uh, with something like a tissue box that has no lid, but it will be more difficult. So a box with a lid if you can find one. Um, and the next thing we're going to have is the tube from, this is a paper towel roll, but glad wrap or tin foil or any of those things will do as well. Um, and this one is probably about 30 centimeters or so long. It doesn't matter if it's not exact, it just gives you some idea of what I'm working with here. Okay, so the first step is we're going to mark a whole lot of things for cutting later. We're going to start by marking on the base of your box. So here's my lid and I'm going to be drawing on this surface in here. And I'm going to put my tube in one corner and I think that it doesn't matter which corner, I'm going to do it in this corner here and I'm going to trace around it with a pencil just like so. A circle drawn in the corner of the box that matches the size of my tube. I'm now going to mark holes for my harp strings um, in a row. So my circle is here. I'm going to mark holes along here. Now I'm going to make four strings or at least four bands, which will give me eight strings. Um, you can do more or fewer if you like. That's entirely up to you, but you want some nice evenly spaced holes. So I'm just going to mark um, in a little line going to the opposite corner of my box, I'm going to mark four X's roughly where I want my strings to be. And they're sort of relatively evenly spaced, but you don't need to measure this or anything. Um, the next thing we're going to mark is on the tube. This is our sound box, and this bottom face of the box here is going to be our soundboard. Now I'm going to mark on the tube, which is going to make the neck of the harp, um, which I will show you in a picture. So the first thing I need to do is mark how much of my neck is actually going to be inside the box. So I'm going to put my tube into the box and I'm going to take my pencil and just draw a little line along the tube at the point where the top of the box is. So I know which bit of my neck is going to be inside the harp that I can't use. So I've got a little line on my tube telling me don't use this bit and I'm going to pop a wee X on that bit to remind myself that that's the bit I don't want to put strings in. Now I'm going to look at the rest of the length of my tube and because I've got four X's on my base I'm going to mark four notches on here. Again, relatively evenly spaced, it's not a big deal if it's not perfect. So I'm going to say here's my line, that's about half, that's about quarter, I'm going to put a little line there. A little line there, line there, and a line there. So I have four lines coming up my tube, which are going to be where the strings attach to the neck of the harp. Um, now, this is the part where you're going to need to ask a grown-up to help you. We're going to cut all those things that we've just marked. Cut out the circle shape that I drew earlier. If your box is tough like mine, that might take a while, you're going to end up with a nice hole through the box, but hopefully all things going well, 
that your neck will fit into. And the next thing we're going to cut is some little X's where you marked your strings were going to go. I now have on the base of my box a hole for the neck and four holes where my strings are going to go into the soundboard. And the last thing that I need to cut is the notches that we marked on the neck. Remember you have an X part that you're not going to cut with a line and then you have your notches for your strings. Um, and I'm just going to try and enlarge those slits a bit by sticking my ruler into them. Now, if you would like to decorate your harp, now is a really great time and you'll find, especially on a lot of historical harps, but also on some modern harps, there are amazing colours and amazing decorations, particularly along the soundboard and sometimes up the neck as well. So if you would like to decorate your harp, you go ahead and do that now and come back to me when everything's decorated and dry and as you would like it. So we're going to turn the box this way up and insert the neck. And I want to turn this so that my notches here face the opposite direction from the holes that I put for my strings. You need to pop your strings in order. So we want to order them from the most stretchy rubber band that you have to the least stretchy rubber band that you have. So biggest string, second biggest, smallest to my little string. Now I'm going to start with the smallest or least stretchy string. I'm going to put it over the top of the neck. I'm going to tuck it in so it sits into the little slit that I made at the back. Thread it through the closest hole in the soundboard. We need something to anchor that rubber band on the inside of the sound box. Now I have here a little plastic bread clip and I'm going to put that through the rubber band. So inside my box here I have my bread clip holding the rubber band around it on the inside. On the outside here my rubber band string is sitting in the little slot that I made it, that's sort of holding it anchored in one point here, and being pulled towards that. Like that. Okay, I'm going to move on to my second rubber band, which is this one, and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, you can use a whole bunch of things if you don't have bread clips, you could use a little safety pin. Got a safety pin here. That's my safety pin. You could pin that through your rubber band. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other two strings. I also thought I would show you what we actually use to anchor the strings on the inside of a harp. We have a little hard string end like this which goes in exactly where I've put your bread clip or your safety pin through the knot in the string to stop it from pulling back through the soundboard. So this really is just like a real harp. So then we want to close up the box. Um, if your lid isn't attached and it's going to fall off all the time, you might need to tape it on. But I suggest that you don't use too much tape because if you break a string and need to replace it, which happens to real harpists all the time, you're going to need to be able to get inside your sound box to do that. So don't tape it so firmly that you can't ever get it off again. Um, mine is actually really easy because it's just going to slot in and that's going to hold it really nicely. So here is my harp and you should be able to hear we've got different pitches based on the different tensions and the different lengths of the strings. There's a little optional extra you can add to your harp if you feel like it and you have them around. I've got a couple of these uh, bamboo skewers and I'm just going to slide it in against the string. What it's going to do is it's going to make a clearer point of contact um, where your string leaves the neck. So you want to make sure you've, that the bamboo skewer is the last thing your string touches before it touches the soundboard. So this is the anchor point. And it should just clear up the sound a little bit. You should get a slightly clearer pitch out of it. So I'm going to put another one on the other side as well. Like that. Once you've got the skewers, in exactly the right spot, 
it'll probably help if you put a little bit of tape around here to hold them in place. Um, so have some fun experimenting with your different strings and what pictures you can get from them. And I hope you've had a great time with me making your own harp. Stay safe out there. We'd love to see what you've made. Please send us a photo of your instrument to apoconnecting at apo.co.nz. Bye.